Hey guys, this is DJM with the Money Brew Show, and today we are talking with Matt Schaup. I have my first question, which is going to be the uh, th- uh, question to throw you off, and then I have the proper question, which is like, how do you transition from employee to leader? Mm-hmm. And that's for like the people in the company, and then like yeah. transition from that into actual owner, and like you know. So stay tuned to watch this. Yeah. I ain't here for the money. But here's the question that I have for you. South African question. If you've been watching the other videos, we've been doing taste tests. We've got all kinds of crazy stuff happening. So you've got to check it out. But would you rather be stranded in a desert with a Shangoma or a Khoi San person? It's a trick question, but you won't know. Only South Africans know if you're watching. Khoi San or a Shangoma? I'm going to say Shangoma. You just ended up with a witch doctor okay. well, in the I'm, desert. I'm done, man. That's not a good thing. I don't think that's good. And it's okay. Is, You'll be fine. What's the other one? He's an African Bushman okay. called the Khoisan. They're okay. very good at hunting. Yeah, see, that, that would have been a better selection. They're geniuses. <laughs> to catch a monkey, what they do is they put salt on the, the monkey's... To, to find water, they put salt mm-hmm. on the monkey's tongue. They put an apple in a sand dune, and the apple's not big enough to... First, they put the apple in there. That monkey goes, finds the apple. Okay. His hand gets stuck because he won't let go of the, the apple because the hole's only big enough for his wrist. Okay. Then they put the salt. They leave the apple, let him run, find that water, okay. and they follow him. Okay. Like geniuses. Well, I'm dead in the desert, probably with a spell. <laughs> yeah. <cast on> <laughs> or like taking your heart and doing something. Yep. Okay, guys. Um, this is the segment. So, yeah, from employee to leader... To business owner, what does that look like, Matt? Yeah, well, I mean, I was never a good employee, so uh, <laughs> I, I went from employee to to business owner, um, and you know, I don't know what kind of journey uh, some people are on. I feel like there's those naturally born entrepreneurs where they've never worked for somebody; they've always had an idea. But mm-hmm. I speak also with a lot of people that were employees to uh, to go to business owner, solopreneurs, right? They yeah. start up; it's just them. Um, it's it's a totally different world. I think you have to be really good at uh, managing your time and holding yourself accountable as an employee. Mm-hmm. In, in unfortunately, a lot of just traditional business situations, like you're told what to do, you're given a list, you're given those tasks, you complete them, yeah. and you just kind of repeat that cycle. As a business owner, like you make your own, you make your yeah. own hours, you can do what you want, when you want, and that can be great. Uh, but if you're not organized, yeah. and you can't hold yourself accountable, uh, that can also be not so great. You're not going to yeah. do well. The, um, the risks are so high. Like mm-hmm. even I've watched in your business, you know, they have some flexible schedule, but they still have to be on on task. Yes. Which I think I took yeah. away from that. There's also the, the the insane thing about being an employee, an owner, is the liability, the taxes. There's all this stuff you have to deal with, yeah. where like the owner takes that on. And mm-hmm. employees, I've been seeing this new thing, and I'm calling it the hybrid economy, where it's like for you to be successful, sometimes you do need to work two part time gigs but then you get the best of both worlds and you don't have any of that tax liability that the owners have and i'm so curious because you're going to find people who just want to have that and they're happy Mm -hmm. but then there's people that are like no 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 no. i want the rocket ships like what you spoke about earlier yeah so so those are you telling me that employees need to the ones that are going to do the best are going to be like hey boss like how do i go to the next level I don't just yeah. want to do this. Is that what you're telling? Because I don't know. I don't have that much experience. So are you talking about employees, like employees within my company? Sure. Or yeah, yeah. I mean, it's um, you know, I I don't call them employees. I mean, yeah. I, I look at Co-workers. it. I look at it as a as a team. So I think okay. as a, as somebody, if you're going to go be employed by a by a company, yeah. you've got to look at the culture of that company, the leadership of that company, the vision of that company, and and what the what just what the culture is. How yeah. you know are they employees where it's the boss telling them what to do? They're a <laughs> cog in a wheel and they produce profit and it's bottom line and if you stop producing profit I'll cut you like I really used to I used to think a lot that way in business and that's not a great thing or do you have an environment where the leader wants to make those people better and elevate them mm-hmm. and give them opportunity um, you know my uh, perspective and standpoint on on leading team members is you give them a role you give them a responsibility mm-hmm. um, you know key performance indicators KPIs and you know, they're, they're all part of a bigger vision, um, wow. but then give them the space to go accomplish that. I, I'm a big mm-hmm. micromanager, so I go, here's your job description, yeah. and I'm handing this over to you so I don't have to do it. 
Yeah. Like, what do I turn around and do? How's it going? What are you doing? Do you need some help? And so you, know, you said you're a big you, you're yeah. a big non micromanager. You're kind of like a delegator, or you or you're, you're like a delegator with some micromanagement. I'm a I'm a control freak, right? Okay. And I just cool. I want to know yeah, what's yeah. going on. So okay. I've had to work really hard to yeah. to increase my leadership. As you give somebody a role, interesting. Um, Matt Dahlstrom wrote a book, and I'm so spaced in the name. Are you going to we'll edit this, it. or is this going to go no, straight? We'll, we'll find it. We'll find it. Um, but he says you give them a role, and cool. you give them the rope. You give them the oh, space nice. to accomplish that. And he goes, a lot of leaders, they'll or business owners, they'll just hang them with a the rope, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, why did why did you hire me if you're just going to come in and, and check in on me? So um, that that's important, right? Yeah. But if you're don't if you're, worry, we won't hang you on a rope. Okay. You, you could be a great producer, performer, say say salesperson, right? There's mm. the salesperson that goes, hey, I'm going to go start my own company. Maybe you're great at sales, great at making those connections, but you don't know how to manage other people. You don't yeah. know, nor do you understand the components of business that you now have to address. Right. Big difference between self-employed and business owner. Oh yeah. So Robert Kiyosaki, cash flow quadrant, so right? Good. You're employed, you trade time for money. Self-employed, you just trade time for money. Yeah. And uh, many times you don't like your boss. You know, yeah. you like your boss less than the previous boss because oh, yeah. it's you. Yeah. That transition to business owners when you can start inspiring and leading and developing people yeah. that you can leverage. But that that bridge is where you really have to focus on your leadership skills and your I, people skills. I love it. It kind of makes me think like if I was to translate that from my South African brain, it's it's like you're creating mini business owners in your business because yes. you, 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 like that's the mindset. Like there's always not, we, we, you just debunked a mindset, which I love. Like, so everyone watch this carefully, rewatch it because Matt debunked the fact that you don't have to be a coworker or a team member. And, and you, you need to remember you're a business owner within that space or that role. And so there's some huge leveraging aspects to that. So keep that in mind. Yeah. I think that's huge. And if you're the business leader, just just one more thing yeah, to add as you say that is like if, if you're going to say, hey, you know, you're a, you're, you're a business owner, you're a business leader within the business. Well, then as you as a leader share in the profit that that person helps you create, because if you're, yeah. if you're giving them the responsibility and the dream of, hey, you're a business owner, you're yeah. a leader here, but I'm going to keep all the profit that you just helped me create. Yeah. Like you're entitled to it. You're the business owner. You took the risk. But um, yeah. I've always found that, you know, you pour into people. Yeah. Yeah. You share in that profit that gets generated together, yeah. um, and they're going to be more motivated to do that. Not all about the money, though. Um, yeah. We can talk maybe in another segment or in this one. Yeah, let's go for The it. environment you create, the other things that you offer to your yeah. team members, apart from the paycheck, the commission, the dollars and cents, really makes the difference. Big difference. Yeah. I love that, and yeah, that's that makes that's that makes total sense. No pun intended. Cents and dollars, right? Do you notice how like most of the stuff is good? Okay, South back, Africa's legit. Man. Back to the segment, guys. This is a really cool uh, make it at home drink, uh, Pellegrino, some lemonade, and then you throw some special stuff, which you can go find on my website, Daniel James Media slash Yuck to Yum. Okay, just kind of have to like mix it a little bit. Mix it. Yeah. Stir it. You may have to reuse that spoon too. Okay. Yep. Hasta la vista, baby. Right. Cheers. So chug the whole thing. How do I do this? Just have some a little sip. I went light on you. I didn't even throw enough. Okay. Yeah, you can see how that could taste good when there's more in there because mm -hmm. it comes out like cinnamony. Mm -hmm. um, That's awesome. That's great. Yuck to yum. One to ten. I give that a nine and a half. Good. No one's given a nine and a half. I'm a lemonade guy. Fire. But it's good. I love I'll drink it. more of it. So as you guys know, we get about a thousand views to 3000 views, but that's because we push it in front of a lot of people, right? So we're, we're targeting really important people. Uh, if you want to be a sponsor of this show, let us know we have different sponsorships levels. We can get like a, a targeted keyword with this video or like an episode with your sponsor in it um, to every video uh, for like four videos. Just let us know. If your if your target market is kind of general or like marketing managers or business people, let us know. We can get you on the show. And then secondly, Matt, tell us about this book, man. Like yeah. this thing is killer. I can't wait to read it. <laughs> Painted like... Baby. Uh, the the title is Painted Baby. Subtitle is Connect with Clients Through Brave and Vulnerable Storytelling. And um, the thesis of the book is that uh, painting a picture 
of perfection prevents true connection. And we're actually conditioned as business owners and as humans to always put our best and most perfect mm. foot forward. And we actually lose opportunities to connect with clients and the people that we serve and that our business touches yeah. when we're trying to be five star A plus all the time. So I was forced to share in a sales engagement years ago um, a story about a time that I screwed up. I was never asked to do this before. So I shared a couple of stories, little things where there wasn't much on the line. Uh, and then I just said, you know what, I'll tell you the big one. We painted a baby, we had a paint sprayer blow up, <laughs> exploded all over a client, their house, their landscaping, and their nine month old baby. Like could have yeah. seriously harmed the baby. Yeah. Uh, made the situation right, but I actually landed one of the biggest deals of my life in the painting business by sharing this. Cool. And I kind of got on to, uh, something there and I yeah. said listen clients and people and humans we actually connect when somebody takes a step into bravery and vulnerability yeah. and shares that they're not perfect then the other person breathes a sigh of relief and they do the same thing and you build a deeper level connection and uh, it actually allows you to under promise and then over deliver to people so I just take you through the story of that story and then some structure and how you can capture craft and communicate your painted baby story, whatever that is, and uh, leverage that and inject that into your relationship building process within your business. I love it. I love it. Learning that lesson, guys, is important. You know, like your competitors are not going to do it. So it's, you might mm -hmm. as well, you might as well, because they're not going to, they're going to laugh at the marketing guy who brings this into the table unless they read the book or see Matt. You won't get this content anywhere else. Thank you so much. Remember to subscribe. You'll get that giveaway book. Hit the comment in there too, and that will qualify you for the book. Subscribe to Matt's stuff. We will see you on the next segment. And there's even a segment where Matt goes into like how he started. And I think it's just beautiful. So thanks for watching. We'll see you. Cheers. Cheers.